mentioned? Well, I'm not crazy about a lot of the terminology. Artificial intelligence implies it's not real intelligence, <clears throat> but it is real intelligence. Virtual reality implies it's not real reality. The telephone is virtual reality. You enter a virtual space as if you were together, even if you're hundreds of miles apart. But I can't say, oh, that agreement I made with you last night, that was virtual reality, that, that's not real. Or that loving sentiment I expressed, that, that was virtual reality. Uh, one I really uh, don't use and object to is transhumanism, because it, it implies that we're going to transcend our humanity. I think we're actually going to enhance our humanity. We're going to transcend the limitations of biology and be transbiological. So do you think that uh, the new world should be inclusive so that what we define as non-human today should be included in the new term? Uh, well, I, I'm humanity is precious, but we will have new entities to deal with. I'm not re necessarily recommending new terminology. We're really stuck with the terminology we have. It's just uh, not fully satisfactory. We're dealing with concepts that haven't existed before. Uh, maybe there'll be a new term. Uh, cyborg sounds kind of uh, unappealing, but that's actually what we're going to become. We're going to be putting technology in ourselves. I mean, this is not yet inside my body and brain. It may as well be. It's really part of who I am. And we are going to be extending ourselves, literally by putting them in our bodies and brains, ultimately. Well, certainly software has improved in reliability. Part of that is that it's decentralized and there's a lot of redundancy. Uh, take the internet, for example. It's robust because if it's some part of it breaks down, the information just flows around it, which is actually exactly what happens in our brains. Uh, but nobody's taken down a portion of the internet for even one second uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, but more importantly, software is becoming more and more intelligent. If all the artificially intelligent software were to stop tomorrow, our infrastructure would grind to a halt. You couldn't get money from your bank, transportation and communication would halt. Uh, every time you get an electrocardiogram, comes back with a computerized analysis of, that rivals that of doctors. Uh, computers are making billions of dollars of intelligent financial transactions, flying and landing airplanes. Uh, it's bec and the software is getting gradually getting more and more intelligent, taking on functions that that people used to do. So the redundancy and uh, uh, the capacity of routing around failures of these software systems is going to be e e extremely important. Otherwise, our society would become brittle. Um, do you think that there is potentially a need for a legal evolution as well? We have seen how countries can turn off the internet on a whim uh, uh, and uh, there are international interests uh, uh, or well, how the United I mean, States seizes 80,000 domains because of a mistake uh, and it doesn't seem to matter. It's actually very hard for countries to stop the internet. There's other ways of getting information into these countries. They also find that their economy grinds to a halt if they stop the internet. That's why Egypt turned the internet back on. Uh, these systems have become really deeply integrated into our lives, our economy, and they're very democratizing. I wrote in the 80s that the Soviet Union would be swept away by the then emerging decentralized communication, and that's exactly what happened. And we can see the democratizing effects. It's also democratizing in terms of the tools of creativity. A kid in her dorm room can create an orchestra, or a couple of kids at Harvard started Facebook with $1,000 laptops, same for Google. Uh, you don't have to be a big corporation, you just have to have the right idea to uh, create disruptive change. Systems. Well, it's very interesting when people refer to Watson without even thinking about it, without intending to make a statement, they refer to Watson as he and him, and give it a, uh, a personal pronoun that implies it's not a machine. And it did seem to have a personality, and it, it commanded natural human language in quite a convincing way. There was a very strong visceral reaction to watching it. It's actually not quite at human levels. The human players were better at language than Watson by a small degree, but Watson made up for it by being able to remember everything it had read. Keep in mind that Watson not only understood the natural language queries, which are quite convoluted with with uh, similes and metaphors and puns and jokes and riddles. 
but also understood hundreds of thousands of pages of material I'd read, all of Wikipedia and all encyclopedias. Uh, this was not spoon-fed. Nobody actually created link by link a database with that knowledge. It just read this material just the way a human would do. But unlike a human, it could remember everything uh, very accurately and, and refresh its, its memory. Uh, I had predicted that a computer would take the World Chess Championship by 1998. I wrote that in the 80s. I also predicted that when that happened, we would immediately dismiss chess as not being really a very good example of human intelligence. Now, both of those things happened. And lots of people then said, well, computers will never be able to command the subtleties of human language. Watson is a really good uh, reply to that. Now, people, again, are very quick to dismiss Watson as if that were the last word in artificial intelligence. If that was the last thing we ever did in artificial intelligence, they would be right, that AI did not achieve human levels. But it's obviously not the last thing. It's a point on a trajectory. It's a very impressive one. That was not possible just a few years ago. And it made some obvious kinds of mistakes. Those can be corrected. The next version will be that much smarter, won't have such obvious deficits. Uh, and if you were to take the Watson technology today and apply it to the Turing test application, it would do a pretty good job. In my, in my view, it would still not pass a valid Turing test. It's not at that level yet, but it's, but it's, a, it's a, a very important milestone towards getting there. It should give us encouragement that software is also developing. You were too prudent uh, in your prediction of uh, the chess uh, uh, winning by one year. Yeah. Uh, is it going to turn out that you will have been too prudent by, I don't know, five years or more with your bet with Mitch Kapper? And have you <laughs> spoken to him recently about it? Well, I'm not officially changing my prediction. I think 20 years seems very comfortable. Uh, you know, 10 years from now, computers if, you know, will be that much smarter than Watson, we should be able to do a pretty convincing job with the Turing test. Uh, I'm still saying 20 years, but I think that's a pretty comfortable prediction at this point.